Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and I'm a full-time reseller. This video is going to be a little different. Um, it is RA, which is great. It's not going to be a specific theme though, like I have a CVS video, I have a Home Depot video. My next video after this one is going to be a Rite Aid video. This one is going to be sort of a Frankenstein video, and I'm not just saying that because it's October's video. This is going to be sort of a summer RAcation where I'm going to show you all of the stops I made in the summer that weren't enough to make a full video by themselves. So this video is going to be like a little sample board, little crackers and cheese and meats, little charcuterie of bolos. You're going to see me go to some independent drugstores, so not CVS and Walgreens, independent drugstores that sometimes have really good stuff. Um, you'll see whether or not that was the case this time. The middle part is going to be a specific run where I was clearing out one product from a local chain. Um, and then I found a bunch of little other stuff along the way. And then the last part is going to be a bunch of different hair care bolos that I was pulling out of a grocery store and Walmart. So it's very important to watch the end because you're gonna see a lot of different stuff. And it's all stuff that you can still find, still make money on, and have access to because I'm assuming most people have access to a Walmart. So sit back and enjoy how I spent my summer RAcation. Roll the intro. We're gonna start this video off with the independent pharmacies. That's your Health Mart pharmacies, your Good Neighbor pharmacies, and your general mom and pop pharmacies. You'll know you're in the right place if the stuff seems kinda of old and dusty. You'll know you're in the wrong place if it kinda of looks like this. At pharmacies like these, I'm looking for discontinued goods or things that I know are on a current shortage. So the newer it looks, the worse it's gonna be for discontinued bolos. I really don't live in an area where there are a lot of dusty pharmacies, but I know a lot of people do. Unfortunately, this store was too new and I didn't find anything. This next one looked promising from the outside, but inside the inventory didn't have that not touched in 10 years look to it. And again, I found nothing. It was a bust. I don't know, sometimes you get the pharmacies where it's um, like you see essential oils and stuff and you're like, okay, this isn't, this isn't where I wanna be. And then sometimes you get the ones like this where they are in fact a small pharmacy that doesn't appear to get much traffic but for whatever reason, they just don't have anything that's worth money. So on to the next one. Getting into a liquidator, but at least if this stop ends up being crap, uh, there's a pet store and my cats need food. So making something worth it here. This is why it's important to build a trip around different stops. At this point, the pharmacies weren't treating me very well, so I stopped at a nearby liquidator. And that turned out to be just the little midday boost my trip needed. Their beauty section was completely stacked, and these should look familiar from my CVS RA video. We've already established that they sell for about $20 a piece, and I'm gonna buy them here for $2.19. I will not be buying the ones with peeling or torn fronts though, because Amazon customers are very picky and they don't like receiving merchandise that looks like this. I sold 10 of them FBA and made about 100 bucks profit. Next, I found this Neutrogena Rapid Wrinkle Repair for $4.99. Amazon says it sells for about $25. Next, I've sold this product before, so I didn't even have to look it up, the Neutrogena Eye Makeup Remover Lotion. Originally retailed for about $12, it's now just $4.29. And I went on to sell it for $43.99. This whipped body balm was only $4, and it sold for almost $25. The discontinued Neutrogena hits just keep coming. This one was only $5, and I sold it for $38.99. If you ever see Pro-X Olay products, you need to stop and scan them. They're not all worth money, but the majority are. I paid $10 for these and sold them for $60 each. Last beauty product find, this one was $5 and I sold it for $20. Whoops. One of my rules of thumb is if I've never seen it before, I'm gonna scan it. I did that for this and it turned out to not be worth money, but always keep an eye out for the weird stuff. And it wouldn't be one of my retail arbitrage videos without a visit from off clip on fans. Just $4.39 each, and I sold them for between $25 and $27. Better than killing me, yeah. <laughs> One more Neutrogena sunscreen, and that's everything I bought. The Oral B stuff was for me. Amazing stop, full of profit, 10 out of 10, would stop again. And that sunscreen is a great exercise in learning how to read a keep a chart. 
The sunscreen frequently goes out of stock from Amazon and when it does, the price spikes. So you wouldn't want to sell when Amazon is competing with you, but you do want to time it for when Amazon is gone. Then I made my way to the pet store. Much like anything else I do in life, check the clearance section first. 15 pounds of cat food, 10 bucks. High quality, can't beat it. Back to the drugstores. Been striking out with the pharmacies. I wasn't gonna come to this one cause it's like right in front of a hospital. And you know, that means it's probably well trafficked and not necessarily good. But the pictures I saw on Google kind of made me laugh. I thought they were stock photos for a second until I realized, no, this is the actual pharmacy staff and they took these pictures and they uploaded them. So I'm gonna come look at this pharmacy and see if there's anything good. I hate doing videos about pharmacies though because I always feel bad about attempting to film inside because I don't want them to think that I'm casing the joint, you know? Um, so we'll see. We'll see what I see. Why is the Maytag man on this pop machine? I have no idea. I was really excited when I got inside though because I wasn't expecting it to be this packed with general merchandise. They had a lot of health and beauty and even some clearance. Some of the stuff I was kind of on the fence about, if it were just a little bit cheaper or worth a little bit more, I would have picked it up. What really caught my eye were these old medicine bottles. It's a niche I love and I don't really talk about it a lot. Some can be worth a lot of money, like if there was an old Quaalude bottle up there, you would see me climbing up like a spider monkey. I was about to leave empty handed when I noticed these glyoxides which at the time of filming were on the tail end of a shortage. In the earlier part of the year when they first went on shortage, I made my way around all the big national drugstores to clear them out. And I guess I just kind of forgot to check the independent drugstores. As you can see, the product went out of stock in March and rose in price all summer long until at the time of recording this voiceover, it is now back in stock everywhere and no longer a bolo. I sold these two ounce bottles for $100 each. Just goes to show when there's a shortage, you really gotta move to make your money. Then I went to another drugstore that's practically right across the street and found some health and beauty. Like this Aveeno Positively Nourishing Body Wash that I bought for $7.19 and sold for $30. Baby powders that have talc in them instead of cornstarch are a bolo. This mini size really isn't worth that much, but if you find the full size bottles, you've found money. One more glyoxide. Next was this Suave Deep Moisture Replenish Conditioner for $2.19 that I sold for $25. Lastly was this Head & Shoulders Oil Control Shampoo. Unfortunately, it's expired, so it's only worth about $20. If it were fresh, it'd be worth $30 or more. On to the next drugstore. Again, it's looking very modern and clean, which is not a good sign. Then I found not one, not two, but three glyoxides. These are only the half ounce size, which due to being less common are actually worth more per ounce. I sold them for $60 each. Yes, I completely understand that the math ain't mathin' and that people should buy the two ounce because it's a better deal, but sometimes people can't afford the bigger bottle. I've got one more pharmacy stop to go before I'm all done. It is small, it is cramped, it doesn't have much of anything, and it doesn't even have any glyoxides. So much for that. That last pharmacy was a bust. It was so small and like weird, but I only came because this town also has a very small liquidator that I do find things at occasionally, so I'm gonna make the trip worth it. And then I'm completely done, I'm gonna head back home. I left the house at like 10.30, it is currently 2.54, so I feel like I got a lot done with the time. This place is so strange because it's also part of a hardware store, but it's got the right old dusty look to it, so you know you're gonna find some good stuff. But all I found today was something I already mentioned in a previous video, $2 Everyman Jack Clays, and I sell them for 20. And that'll do it for the first section of this video. I set out hoping to find some dusty old pharmacies to show you, failed, but still managed to find plenty of profit, just not in the way I had hoped. In a little over four hours of sourcing, I was able to find products that should sell for at least $1,200. My profit margin is usually around 50%, so if we apply that here, I should make about $600 profit. If we don't include the time it takes to pack and ship, which honestly isn't that long, that's about $150 an hour, which is better than any job my marketing degree would have gotten me. Not to mention the absolute joy a good sourcing trip brings me. It's got me singing in the car the whole way home. Now on to part two of my retail arbitrage summer vacation. On my way to start my next chase, and you know if there's a thrift nearby, I have to stop. This location's not normally that great for me, so I don't check it out often, but I did find some Phineas and Ferb plush toys. I already sold the Doofenshmirtz for $40. 
After a super long wait in line, I'm heading to my first location, where somebody has left their dog. Same chain where I picked up some Theraflus and Mentholatums in a previous video, but that's not what I'm here for today. No, this time I'm after one particular clearance product that sells super well and I seem to be one of the only people selling it. This location was a very rare miss for that product, but at least the dog owner came back. I dropped my kids off at grandma's and vowed to hit every location in her area before they closed. And as you'll see, that proved to be a very lucrative idea. They aren't marked here, but these Nair for Men cans are $4.48 on clearance. When you have the perfect storm of an item on clearance, a very profitable selling price, nearly no one on the listing, and chains with multiple locations and clearance prices the same at each one, you really need to stop what you're doing and go round them up. And save for the rare empty-handed walk of shame and occasional traffic slowdown, I made great time hitting every single store I could, finding can after can after can after can. And I just kept going until I got them all. After everything is said and done, I ended up with 30 cans from this sweep. So, what's all the fuss about? I started selling these at $24.99 each, but the demand had me going higher. I took it to $29.99, and then finally jumped to $36.99 each. And this is not just an Amazon sale, you can absolutely sell them for similar prices on eBay. But wait, there's more! I was also grabbing these Garnier BB creams for $6.48 and selling them for $34.99. It's all about the clearance, I was also grabbing these Vizzy Cleanse for $9.98 and selling them for $30. Some Blow Pro Dry Shampoos, 5 into 20. A $7 Yes to Men's Shaving Cream, I sold that for $30. And a Bolo from a previous video, $9 into $43.99. And of course, grabbing all the Theraflus and Mentholatums. Honestly, I couldn't have asked for a better evening sweep. Every single store had at least one clearance gem for me. I finished my last stop a little after 9 and headed home under the moonlight. This sweep took me about 5 hours. Since I picked up so many little things in the background and only really showed you the nair, that's the numbers I'm going to go off of. The 30 cans had a gross sale of $955.70, and of that, I took home $561.58. That comes out to $112.20 per hour, not counting all the other stuff I was picking up too. If you add that in, the number goes way higher. On to section three, which I'm calling the hair care bolo chase. First find are these Burt's Bees avocado pre-shampoos. I was at one point getting $57.99 each for these, but the listing has since been price alerted and I can't seem to get a fair price for them on Amazon, so I've been selling them on eBay for $50. These bedhead maxed out hairsprays are something that I previously mentioned on my Instagram page. If you're not already following me there, you should. I was selling them for 50, they're going up to 70 now, and they sell for similar prices on eBay. So if you don't sell on Amazon or you're gated there, no problem at all. Also gonna grab these self-absorbed shampoos. This product is still made. This is actually just an older packaging. I sell them for $33.99 each, which is only 56% ROI, but the profit is about $8.50 when I throw them in an FBA box, so that's fine. If you've seen previous videos, you know what these are. Not hair care, but I couldn't resist showing you some other products. This super old looking BB cream box caught my eye and it does have a clearance sticker on it. It's $12 and it doesn't look like much, but I sold it for $80. So that got me thinking about the box next to it. Remember how I picked up a similar version on clearance in part one? Well, sure enough, these are on a shortage or they're discontinued, I'm not really sure. But people are always asking, how do you know what to sell? How do you find out about these things? Well, this is exactly how I go about doing it. You find something on clearance and you start branching out from there. Or another common tip is to look for packaging that sticks out amongst its peers. This packaging looked old to me and sure enough, it is. Looks like it discontinued about two years ago and hit a high of $60 each, but someone is currently tanking the listing, so I'm gonna hold mine until they're gone. Switching to a different grocery chain in search of some more hair care bolos. Some you've seen before, like these Clairol Age Defies in color seven and eight, which I featured in a previous video. Those two colors seem to be the most sought after and they sell for $40 each. The absolutely ubiquitous off clip-on refills, they follow me everywhere. 
I threw them in my cart because they didn't have any price on them and was pleasantly surprised when they rang up $1.97 each. I'm currently selling a three pack for $40. I hear you, that's all old stuff. You wanna see the new stuff. Here it is. These $4 Garnier root amps appear to be discontinued. How do I know? Well, they showed up at one of my liquidators earlier in the year and I was selling them for 25. They have since gone up to $44.99. This blank space where no one's on the listing is because Amazon started price alerting it and won't let you sell them for more than like $10. So if you find them, you have to sell them on eBay. Before I get to some other new stuff, I had to check the clearance. These Mitchum Smart Solid Unscented's were actually only $2. They sell for about $20 on Amazon. And this is one of those rare times where you can actually sell them for more on eBay. People are asking $25 and they appear to be getting it. And although I've been unsuccessful, I'm always looking for the Citracal gummies. They're currently on another shortage and they're up to a whopping $56.99 a piece. And one more health and beauty stop before we get back to the hair care. These Oxy Total Cares caught my eye because they looked kind of old, and they were, but not in a sellable way. Hey, don't these look kind of familiar from earlier in the video? And they're expired too. I guess that's my sign to move back onto the hair care bolos. What I was actually after this whole time were these Redken Thickening Lotions. Full price, not on clearance, $16.42. And also these Redken 04 Satin Wear Thermal Blow Dry Lotions. Again, full price, $16. Do not confuse them with the very similar looking 22 Hot Sets. These have faked me out on more than one occasion. I'll get to what they sell for, but first I wanted to talk about these Rough Pastes. I'm pretty sure they're discontinued, so you'll want to keep an eye on them. The prices on eBay are not quite there yet for me, but I'm sure that they will be soon. Same thing with the Outshines right next to them. Another bolo from a previous video, you buy them for around 25 and you sell them for 50. Honda S2000 appreciation moment. So back to the Redken. How did I know they were a bolo and how much are they worth? Clearance find, duh. Except surprise, it's at Walmart. Please ignore some of the vertical video shots. I was originally gonna use this on Instagram. I originally encountered these at Walmart salons on clearance. Bet you never thought to look there. These large bottles sell for $110 and I was getting them for between $13 and $26. They also had satin wares for between $10 and $20. Those sell for $40 a piece, but I sell them in a two pack for 80. And the far more common smaller bottles of the thickening lotions. Those had the same buy costs and sale price as the satin wear. You'll still make money paying the salon's full price, but if you find them for half off, it's even better. And then all I did was go online to see what Walmarts had a salon and made plans to get to them. This wasn't a main chase for me. This was a, if I'm gonna be in the area, I'll stop in. I started back in May and did not complete all my Walmarts until late August. Sometimes if you find a money-making clearance item, you have to move fast. But if I did that for everything, I'd probably have no free time and get really burnt out. Not to mention these Walmarts are all really spread out and not easy to chase. Also, I don't think many people are hitting Walmart salons, so I felt pretty comfortable taking my time with this one. Not every location was a hit either. I left empty handed from plenty of them. And that's it for my hair care bolos, and that's it for the whole video. How I spent my summer retail arbitrage vacation. Still here? Great. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, especially you guys that stick it out all the way to the end. If you're still here, leave me that thumbs up so that I know. If you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so because I have no set upload schedule other than hopefully one video a month. So the best way to see my videos pop up in your feed is to subscribe. My next video is going to be Rite Aid. I'm doing a whole bunch of Rite Aid stops and finding a lot of great stuff at each one. Even if you don't have Rite Aids nearby, you can still learn about the stuff I'm finding and see if you can find them at your local stores. Now get out there, have fun, and find some of this good stuff.